Fritzy, do you have this suggestion box email? I do. Okay. You want to read him? Now, this sure. is this is uh, February of 09. It's a Saturday morning. And that's uh, so whatever happened on Friday's show, you decided to wake up. And the first thing you did is you wanted to send an email to all of us. We were working in the attic. We weren't even on TV at the time. And to the Paulie's show. credit and organizational skills, this is over nine years ago and he still right. has it on files. Seaton providing the music. Suggestion box. <laughs> Mailbox located outside front door of new studios or just set it up somewhere within the studio. It would be our passive aggressive way of communicating with one another for things that need to be addressed outside of our comfort zones. Everyone has issues at their workplace and wish they had the courage or some type of way to verbalize or communicate their anger or frustration. Could be very funny to incorporate this on the air. For a staff so small to have a suggestion box would be kind of funny in and of itself. Sent via BlackBerry. <laughs> BlackBerry. Okay. For the life of me, I cannot figure out what was going on in my mind or what happened in the days leading up to me sending that out. Was this when I asked you during the show to take out the garbage? It's possible, but this was like over, this is like a year and a half already in, over, almost a year and a half into us, you know. Yeah, Seaton. I mean, if we really start getting into the layers of this, oh it, it could be interesting because this isn't like Todd just had a bad day and sent it. Again, this is a buildup email. This is, he's had, he's got things on his mind that he wants to say to the group, but he can't. And he's trying to find a way to do it. And so finally, the genius struck him. Why don't we just put a suggestion box somewhere mm -hmm. that, where we can sort of air our grievances without actually having to put our face to it. And then you could just drop it in there. So mm -hmm. all of the things that he wanted to get off of his chest, he could just put in that box and then you would read them. And this is even more passive aggressive than I realized because now that I'm looking at it, I'm somehow covering it up by saying, hey, it could be a funny thing for content. Mm -hmm. But obviously there's something more upsetting or sinister behind it where it's even doubly passive aggressive because I'm pretending that it could be something silly or fun when I'm actually, you know, I guess thinking that it's something we seriously need to discuss. And we're only a year and a half into this new project. And you're all of a, you want to have a suggestion box. Yes, McLovin. What strikes me is the logistics. I remember the setup. Like, how would you place something in that without everyone seeing you place it in there? It have to, where would you put it that was safe? There's no way you could see. Everyone would know who put the suggestions in. And, you know, the handwriting. But by now we know each other. So even then, it was, you know, we had all been working together for long enough to know pretty much. Unless you're one of those crazy people like me. Yeah. Maybe we, you, you cut things out of magazines and <laughs> tape words to like a piece of construction paper and make a sentence out of but it. But like, even if you printed it out on, on just normal paper, right? Cut it up yeah. and then put it in there. Yeah. There was only three of us or four of us at McLovin the time. McLovin wasn't there. McLovin wasn't even there yet. It would, everybody would immediately know whose problem it was. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Todd yelled at me the other day about uh, not having guest prep done right. Like, we would all know exactly who he's talking about. Well, that's what about. I said to Todd. I said, Fritzy, we're going to know <laughs> who is putting the suggestion in the suggestion box. It is kind of ridiculous on many levels. But at that moment, for some reason, I felt like, you know, that's something that needed to be said. I Holy, feel bad for that guy in that you have You have a psychologist, don't you? Yeah, we have a psychologist on uh, retainer. On, yeah. You Maybe. want him to break this down? Yes. You're not. You also, Dan, are maybe forgetting the coffee mid-show coffee run yep. incident of '09. Yep. That, if I recall, you asked Todd to run to get you coffee mid-show. Yes. And when you went back on your side, Todd goes, "I guess I could just leave the show and go get coffee, and yep. it won't change anything around here." I think that was a major one in '09, from what I recall. Yeah, I don't remember the sequence of events, but I could see well, something like so that bad. leading to some type of suggestion box. Yeah, Seaton. I think that the it was a different time then. And I think that we're much more open and free about saying things, uh, especially on the show, about like, hey, I didn't really like that. Whereas before, I don't really think that that happened. I think everybody sat in their chair and kept quiet. Well, everybody had to fill in. They, they had to help. They had to pitch in. And I said to Fritzy, could you take out the garbage? It, it wasn't like we weren't doing manual labor up there. I think it was... I, I think, and I could be wrong, and hopefully I'm not, but to, to defend myself, I think it was less about manual labor and, and putting paper in a printer that's where they ran out of printer or of paper or whatever the case may be or, if, just, or you know, garbage that needed to be thrown out. I think it was maybe the time of day that it was. If it was something that was like during the course of the show. Where the I garbage like was, was after the show. The coffee, the infamous coffee, the coffee incident. 
was during the show. Coffee Run 09, well, we call that. Well, yeah. all these years later, if I had an attitude about being asked to throw out the garbage. You then, did. And that's that's not being a team player. You did. And I'm going to apologize for that if I didn't address that many years ago. That's kind of weak to, to not do some other things. You don't do any manual labor. Ever. A lot of it I can't do. But, you know, you would think at least the ones that I'm physically able to do. What do you mean you can't do it? We've seen how I use a broom or a, or a mop or the sweeping thing I can't do. Okay. There's but, a lot of things that, like, I just don't but do you, well. Okay, but can you learn now to how... You don't even know how to use a broom. Yeah, but once you learn how to do these things, then you then you can't use the excuse that I can't. I don't know how to do it, and you, then you're going to be expected to do it. Did you not know, know how to throw out the garbage? See, that, I have no excuse for that. That that, that would be strictly falling under the, the category. Of, Did you not know how to go get coffee? I don't know how to make coffee real well, but I I, I, I can I can go, go get coffee. But buy. It, but it was like the middle of the first hour of the show, mm. and I was like. That I guess that hurt my feelings. As, as sad as that may seem, or immature, that in the middle of the show to go on a coffee run while we're live on the air. Well, Paulie that, was producing the show, and Seton was running the all the equipment. Okay, so you didn't have. I, it. I understand the show wouldn't take some kind of significant hit if my presence wasn't there in the room. I guess to me, maybe it was a blow to my little, ego. That little, little passive aggressive, passive aggressive there. line. There, there you go. There you go. What See, I, this I, is how it happens. I, what I'm saying is it's oh, like self-deprecation there, Dan. Yeah. By, by you saying go get coffee you, you, without realizing it, it was kind of like, okay, you lined up the guests. That's pretty much all you're good for. You know, and go. Uh, you can go run some coffee. We'll be fine without you. Thanks for getting the, uh, the guest today. You know, See you tomorrow. That's kind of how, you know, it, without you meaning it that oh, way, God. I don't know how you can't see okay. me feeling that no, way. No, no, no. Wait, wait, you have Didn't your guest I... book. Wait, what else do you do? See, you go get the Can coffee. you stop? Did I encourage you to be more? Than just a booker. Absolutely. Okay. From day one. Okay. Okay. And it took a long time for you to be more than just a booker. It did. And okay. you saw something in me, obviously, way beyond but if you, what do you got in the second hour. But back then, you were just a booker. And so you had done your job booking guest. Yeah. And if you weren't going to provide anything else, then maybe go get coffee. I guess in my overinflated ego, I saw myself as more than the booker boy that can where it's okay for me not to be there during the course of the live show. It's, it's not really significant for me to be a part Could you of go it. get me coffee right now? I'd rather not. I'd okay. rather, I'm comfortable. still figuring this out 10 years after the fact that one time you, one time you asked Todd to get coffee. It's still a Oh, he'll never, he'll never let me live it down. There was a lot of stuff going on. It's the then. most embarrassing thing I ever did to the poor guy. It, 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 part of it's my own, uh, whether it's an ego thing or insecurity, whatever you want to call it. I got very sensitive. And I, it, I never ask you to do anything. You've never been asked to clean up anything here. Yeah. Never. And but never it, has. And, and Oh, no, he won't. But I never ask you. After the one time I said, hey, would you go empty the garbage? Yeah. And you looked at me like, are you kidding me? I probably was immature to a certain extent. We could all take blame in certain situations and moments. With that, with not throwing out the garbage, that's that's weak. And that, if that was my uh, my reaction, like, you know, I don't throw out the garbage. I'm not an intern. I don't throw out the garbage. I'm yeah. booker extraordinaire, whatever. That's Then that's on me. But yes. I think I've matured a bit. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.